so I'll come back to this term that you used a couple of times, which I love, um, effort mobilization. And so to me, when I read that, I thought about appropriate effort mobilization and that sense of, of, well, if I'm overly focused on the outcome and worrying about that, then I, I'm going to be focusing on the wrong things and, and probably experiencing emotions that don't necessarily help. But it's it's good to glance at that every now and again. It's good to it's good to to look up at the top of the mountain. And that process goal is really grounding as to what what do I need to what's in front of me, what can I control, what steps do I need to take that allows me to to get there. Um, and so that probably is the dominant focus for a lot of people. But if it's only like that, my experience of working with elite performers tells me that that's that can get doubly intense in a different way. I get I start to drill down and I start to overly worry about that and it forget the purpose. Right? Yeah, um, the number of times that I've had to help athletes drag themselves out of the detail and and think beyond the outcome, almost the why. Why are you doing this? Because they might say, I want to win, win the race, but why? What's it going to give you? And and it's actually more about purpose focus that helps them de-stress and, and alleviate some of that intensity from overly focusing on process. Um, mm -hmm. that, that's my sense, that when you're coaching an athlete, you do need them to be thinking about the goals in different ways. But being mindful as a coach or as a support person of seeing where their head's at and if it draws too far in one direction you've got to help rebalance that it's a bit like the I believe it you can achieve it well it's sort of nonsense unless you can do it <laughs> um, absolutely so just just that sense of of reframing reflecting with people um as as a support so that's my kind of thought on on the benefit of complementarity of the two approaches yeah and i think that is you know completely logical and um and resonates very strongly certainly with how i feel about it and I, and i think um you know in discussing process performance and outcome goals uh my sense is that um the majority of the work has been on understanding, you know, what some of the outcomes might be. Obviously, and there's lots of research in terms of their outcomes and performance. My sense is that there's not quite as much on understanding the circumstances in which each of them will be most appropriate. You know, that that fundamental thing that we started at the very beginning of this this conversation about is like what's going to work best for him. And I I don't know the extent to which um, the research on process performance and outcome goals has sort of grappled with that issue. And again, um, that can happen almost at, at any time when you work with an elite, elite athlete, right? Just because they're an elite athlete doesn't mean that they have to be pursuing specific challenging goals all the time. Um, and yes, for them, the outcome goal is likely to be a real driver and, and potentially at times unavoidable as well. You know, it's, yeah. if their funding is contingent on it, for example. Absolutely, yeah. Um, and we know that process goals will be very beneficial in terms of the, you know, approach to training, consistency, um, developing new skills or refining, um, some of the skills that they already have. Um, so it, I think it, like you've perfectly articulated, I think there are, there will still be different situations where different things are going to work well. And we sort of have to try and shift the mindset of, you know, here's your goal. We've agreed that now let's get on with it because things change. And part of the, the, <laughs> some of the things that I'm sort of really um, fascinated by are that fundamentally when we talk about goal setting, uh, and I sort of mentioned this earlier, we're talking about the future. We're essentially trying to convince ourselves that we can control the future. Um, or at least that we we can project the parameters we have now into the future and assume they will still hold. And COVID has obviously taught us that that's nonsense and that things happen that 
force us to shift and adjust. And so goal setting simply can't be a one-off or a one-size-fits-all. It has to be a what works best for whom in what circumstance, bearing in mind that circumstances will change. And so exactly as you've articulated, it will force you to adjust and refine and um, take stock and reset and reevaluate. And it has to mm. it has to be that way if you're going to do it as effectively as I think it can be done. If you're not doing those things, I think you're just at risk of it not going well. So I was going to sort of ask you a bit of a wrap up question about what your sort of advice for coaches, but I think I might have heard it in that, um, <laughs> that statement there about about understanding that the you need to stay mindful and open to the relevance, the effectiveness of of a goal setting approach. What I'm hearing there, and I love this sort of two polar approaches that I sort of toy with a lot of groups that I work with now, which is which is you know a dream without a plan is just a wish that that speaking to what are you going to do about it what you know you want to get there but you've got to put the graft in and at the same time the polar opposite idea that no plan survives contact with the enemy you've got to stay agile and adaptable and the two approaches can support you set a plan but stay adaptable uh, see how mm. it's going um Totally. And I think inherently through through things like that and through, I think, where the research is leading us, the, the model of delivery of goal setting as a strategy, I think, is going to shift from goal setting being something that we set as a one-off or that we, you know, the, the goals are things that we agree on. I think we're going to move more towards the... Um, building the skill of goal setting within 